So when uh, we came with the, the, the bodyguards, we drove all the way up to this location, this very location where I'm standing. And uh, this is uh, some sort of a parking lot now. But this is, uh, as you can see right there, we have the cathedral. Namirembe Cathedral. This is uh, the big uh, uh, Anglican church in Uganda. The big cathedral of the Anglican church in Uganda. So uh, when we arrived here, Le, uh, what they had done is that they had put down here um, we found a, a truck that was parked somewhere around there and then they had laid down right all over here was uh, uh, brand new uh, weapons that uh, were laid down here now what I can tell you about that uh, that event that day is that uh, as you can see behind me, yes, so these weapons were laid all over just behind here. Yes. And the truck was there. It was a blue truck with a false uh, Pepsi uh, logo that they had stuck on it just to be able to, uh, I think, uh, pass without being checked in, uh, by, by police or any security. And uh, what they had done is that they had... Uh, uh, put uh, the weapons down and then they had put a fake cover on top at the back of the truck and uh, which concealed the weapons under and then they came and hid it right here so my father I think uh, he was very shocked President Idi Amin he was very shocked at, to hear that they had found all this at, uh, at this location of all places yeah, this is um, as I said uh, the, 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 the main church of uh, Uganda, as you can see behind there, the big Namirembe Cathedral. So all the weapons had been put down just right here. So we came, we saw. I can tell you that um, the last time I was on this site was that day. That's why I feel it actually. <laughs> uh, I feel some uh, uh, quite emotional being here again because I was a kid back then, so we came here and I've never been here again stepping on this place uh, after all those years. This is the first time I've been here since then. Uh, but I remember it because I came out, we were there, and uh, I saw what was there. There were all these weapons that were found here. And uh, this is uh, what brought problems to the late Archbishop Janan Luwum. What happened here is uh, that he was caught red-handed, involved in uh, murder, abductions, killings, and their disappearances on the orders of course of uh, his uh, ethnic kin the former president uh, Apollo Milton Obote whom uh, President Idi Amin had uh, deposed around six years earlier but was still trying to fight back to, to, to bring himself back to power uh, using uh, mainly uh, brutal tactics of abductions and disappearances and then uh, of course uh, they did everything to, 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 to blame it on uh, President Idi Amin including the case of uh, um, the late uh, Ben Chuanuka but that one of recent I've been able to clarify that issue because uh, The person who was found uh, driving the vehicle, whose number plate had uh, been uh, reported by eyewitnesses at the site, well, that person is alive, and uh, we have have asked him really publicly uh, to clarify the issue. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
this behind here is the site where we came and saw what was uh, going on and it's not really the church per se or uh, it was just people using the sanctity of the church to uh, carry out um, heinous crimes against the people of Uganda that's really what it was they used the sanctity of the church because they knew that um, it would uh, this was the last place maybe that the security people would uh, would look at so um, uh, if you look at it it makes sense but um, the abuse and now the, the, the uh, what uh, that uh, the way that stigmatized the, 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 the church at the time and my father had to intervene and actually uh, a few months later had to come himself and uh, celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Anglican Church uh, right here with them so as uh, to calm their fears because there are many who are now thinking that um, uh, the church had uh, now been stigmatized with being un uh, a tool of rebellion and was uh, going to be persecuted or whatever. Uh, luckily it was uh, also the 100th, um, it was the centenary celebrations of the Church of Uganda that day. And so uh, there was a huge ceremony uh, right here at the church and uh, the government organized it and my father was around and came. I remember um, uh, he made some efforts towards uh, being uh, reconciling uh, with the church. I think uh, that year as well he went and uh, opened um the um there is uh, somewhere down here in the rubaga this the popol memorial center uh for those who don't know it that was uh, actually uh built by i mean of course it was fund there was a fundraising but of course the Amin government put most of the money so um i was there at uh, the, the 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 opening ceremony of uh, the Popol Memorial Center, which is also nearby. That was uh, part of the efforts to reconcile with the, uh, the church back then. So he did a lot of things for Christianity, including, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the um, uh, church house and uh, the, um, um, uh, what is that, Mapera house. Uh, all those properties were given to the respective churches by the Amin government as well um, so as uh, to, to, to have uh, good relationships because they were actually officially recognized religions uh, in the government of Uganda. So ladies and gentlemen, I just uh, wanted to bring you uh, uh, this uh, piece of history on this uh, very site. On 14th February, Archbishop Janan Luwum was caught red-handed organizing abductions, murders, disappearances of the people of Uganda. And these were crimes that he was committing while pretending to stand up against them with the international community. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, what I would like to say is uh, basically you can't trust anyone. Thank you.